What's up, Local Hack Day? It's Alex uh, here with MLH. Pretty stoked, pretty crazy film studio we have going on. Uh, looks like we're going to be talking about some Vim today. So I don't know if there's any Vim users out there, but it's definitely my favorite text editor. It's one of my favorite programming tools. It might be one of the best pieces of software ever written. Um, debatable, but yeah, uh, let's, let's get into it. So I guess that the basics is like, what is Vim? You probably heard maybe some of your friends use it, maybe you use it, maybe some of your coworkers use it. And people that use it tend to really enjoy it and be pretty passionate about it. I probably wouldn't be give, here giving a talk after work if I didn't really, really like using it. Sweet, so the first thing we need to do is actually open up a file in Vim. It's really easy. We just use the Vim command and give it a file path. So I've already pulled down some of the Rails source. I have in a file called mlh.rb. I'd respect mlh because they're awesome and they, they definitely kill it at what they do. So if we do vim mlh.rb, it's gonna open up right here in a new buffer. So what vim does is that it opens up any files or directories in a brand new vim buffer. You can make any edits you want, but they're actually not gonna get saved to disk until you save it. The way you save it is we'll go to the vim command prompt with colon and we'll hit W. And you'll see there, that just saved. It says down here, written. So that actually wrote the file to disk, which is really cool. And now, one of the most important things, and one of the things that really, really angered me when I didn't use Vim, and I had to pair with one of my coworkers that did use Vim, was I got on his computer, and I was like, hey, I don't use Vim. Can we switch to something else? He's like, yeah, yeah, just, just, just close out and open up Sublime Text. And I was sitting here banging on the keyboard for what seemed like two hours, probably about two minutes until he reached over and realized I absolutely knew nothing about Vim. And that's really simple. So all we need to do is go back to the command prompt with colon and hit Q. And so as you can see here, it says no write says last change, add bang to override. So Vim knows in the buffer that we've made a change, which is really cool. If we wanna quit without saving, we can do Q with the bang on the end, or we can save the file and quit with WQ. But there's actually a shortcut. We can do colon X and that's gonna save and quit. Awesome, we just saved that file, pretty cool. So I guess the first thing to go over is what differentiates Vim from a lot of these other text editors that you might be using. And so in a normal editor like Sublime or Atom or maybe even like Text Edit or Text Wrangler, um, you have one mode. You're always in insert mode. So you're always able just to type command so you can press you can press say the J key and J is going to be printed into your editor and then you press the K key and that's going to be printed and you can go back and forth and you can do that all day what makes Vim different is that it's a modal editor so instead of having this one mode you actually have three modes you have a few modes but there's three basic modes you have insert mode for typing which is what you usually sit in and live inside and during your usual like programming in a normal editor like Sublime or Atom you have visual mode for highlighting, and then you have normal mode for moving around. So when creating Vim, they started thinking and they were saying, when you're writing code, most of the time you're not actually typing. You might be looking at code, reading code, moving around your code base, typing here and there, but for the most part, most of your time is spent moving. And that's why the default mode in Vim is normal mode. So to move in normal mode, it's a little different than using your mouse. You never want to use your mouse. We're just going to always be on the keyboard. And because of that, we can move really quickly. So the basic motion commands to move are H, J, K, and L. So J will take your cursor down a line, as you can see. K will take me back up a line. L will take me to the right. And H will take me to the left. And that's kind of cool. Like, whoa, I, can't, I can move without using my mouse. Awesome, Alex. Why should I start using Vim? Um, that's just kind of the start. The, the real power of Vim is when you start learning about the different commands, and you can combine these commands with motions or movements to do super powerful things. So I guess we should go over some of the most basic commands that really let you move around your code base pretty quickly and seamlessly and start showing you like the real power of Vim. The first command we'll go over, we can go over W. So say I go down here to module on line 10. Oh, and by the way, this is just some Rails source code. It's not mine. It's open source. I love Rails. I work in every day. So this is for the mapper class, which does like a lot of, um, gives you routing constraints and a few other things you get to, you have access to within Rails in your routes RB file if you get any Rails developers out there. So we're on line 10 on module. And say we want to jump to the next word. 
Well, we could hit L a few times and go over, and then we can hit H to come right back. But the quickest way to do it is with a Vim command. So we could hit W. And so what W is going to do, it stands for word. It's actually going to take us to the next word. We can hit B to go backward. It's really simple. W forward word, B backward. So that's really cool. But what happens if we want to like jump around a few more words? The cool thing about Vim is that we can add on a number to any command and Vim will do it that many times. So if we go down and find a line that has a few words on it, like line 17 down here. We go to the beginning of app. So say we wanted to jump to the next word, which is going to be the equal sign. We can hit W. Let's hit B to go back. But what if we want to jump to the next occurrence of app? Well, we could hit 2W, and that's going to jump to that app. And now we can hit 2 back, and then it'll take us right back to the original A that we're on. Kind of cool, not too impressive. Right before, you might have seen me jump down a ton of lines. We were up on line 17 lines above, or 16. We were up on module, 17 lines above on module, and we jumped down to this line, 28, at app. So just like you can do J to go down one, you can also give it a number. So say I want to go down 19 lines to that strategy instance variable we're calling call on it. We can do 19J, and it's going to put us right down there, which is pretty cool. And we can keep changing these commands. We can do two words, two words, and keep moving around, which is pretty awesome. You'll see that there's a few different rules to it. So we have these instance variables with an at. So Vim's going to consider those characters actually its own word. And those are some rules you can look, look into more. But they're pretty cool. And I think that's a pretty, a pretty cool thing about Vim is just how quick you can navigate. Kind of awesome. Cool. So we just talked about how we could jump um, between words. And you might be asking yourself, like, what is a word? So Vim has this idea of text objects. And the most basic text object is a word. And it actually has like a very precise definition. but you can just think about it as like simply words that we think about. So module would be one word right here. Routing would be another word. If you look a line below that, we have class and we have mapper. And those are all words. And we can act on those words. We don't just have commands to move around. We also have a ton of other commands right out of the box. Some normal things you might be doing when you're programming. Maybe you copy things. Maybe you paste things. You probably delete some things. And all those can be done with Vim commands acting on text objects. So you saw how we did move two words. Well, what if we wanted to delete the current word we're on? So say we want to delete module. It's really simple. We can do delete inner word. And all it is is D is a delete command. And then we chain on inner word. Delete inner word. Cool, it's gone. Now we can go back. Awesome, so we deleted that word. Let's look at a few other commands that we can use on words. One of my favorite ones that we can use is find. So you can use F. And what F does is it'll find the next occurrence of what we um, supply to it as an argument. So if we do F capital R, it puts our cursor right on top of that capital R in routing, which is really powerful. Say we go down to this line, and we want to go to the first pr open parentheses and put our cursor there. Easy. F open parentheses. Super simple. And what if we just want to go to that open parentheses, but we want our cursor to be before it, because we might want to do something to initialize. Super easy. We have T. And you can think about that, like find up to. That's how I think about it. Um, there's kind of all these ideas of like nouns and verbs in Vim, but a lot of these commands really just make sense. So if we do T, open parentheses, it takes us to the E. Pretty cool, super powerful. To search backwards, we can use capital F. So capital F, F will put us on the first occurrence of F searching backwards. And capital T is the same thing. So this whole time, we've kind of been talking about normal mode, where you can move around. And pressing keys is going to do something a little bit differently than some of the other text editors you might be used to. How about we talk about insert mode, how we could actually write text? Because at the end of the day, a lot of us are programmers. And what we want to do is get more code um, deployed. To insert insert mode, insert insert mode kind of sounds funny, right? To insert insert mode, all you need to do is hit I. So if you go up a line, we hit I. You'll see down here in the bottom left corner, my mode changed to insert. Now we can type whatever we want. Hello, local hack day. It's Alex doing some Vim. Awesome. But if we want to get out of insert mode, we might want to run some more of those commands on these words that we just typed. All you need to do is hit escape. So let's delete this word. Let's delete this word. Awesome. And now we're back. We're back into normal mode. 
Cool, so a few more really useful commands like we talked about are copy and paste. So Vim has this idea of yank and paste. So if we wanna yank a word, say we go back to define, right? So we go back here, we use Y. The Y command will yank the word. So we do, instead of delete inner word, we can easily do yank inner word. Yank inner word, cool. Now if we wanna paste it, we hit P, and you'll see it pasted it right where my cursor was, right in between def. So if we go up the line and paste it, you can see it right there, really cool. And we can go back, delete inner word, really cool. Um, capital Y, we can yank the whole line. That's, yeah. That covers kind of most of the basic commands, at least some of my favorite ones, and enough to really get you going and be super useful in Vim. Um, two more things I'd like to talk about, two kind of concepts. You have this idea of various registers, and you can think about that like a clipboard. So on your computer, you have various clipboards. You probably have your system clipboard where you copy like text to, a um, few other things. Vim has the same idea, but you have all the letters of the alphabet, uppercase and lowercase, which is super powerful. You can store things in every single one of those. One of my favorite is marks. So a lot of the time, maybe you're working on a really big file. Maybe you're working on a Rails project. Maybe it's Ruby code, like right here. And it's huge. Like this file is 2,099 lines. That's pretty big. So say we're at the bottom down here and or say we're at the top and initialize for working on like our constructor function. We want to be able to save our spot here, go work on some code below and jump straight back to where we were without having to kind of fiddle around and be like, oh, memorize line numbers. No one wants to do that, especially in Vimland. We don't need to do that because we have this awesome thing called marks. So what marks do is they let us kind of bookmark where we were and get back to it. And just like all these other commands we've learned, it's really easy to remember them. So to set a mark, you use M. So you'll hit the M key and then you'll give it a register to save that mark into. So say we want to save this mark into the A register. We can easily do MA. Awesome. So that mark was set. Let's jump to the bottom of the file. We can change some stuff down here. We can escape that. And to get back, we're going to do a um, single quote and then the register name. So single quote A will take us straight back to where we just were. Kind of powerful. Say we want to do something down here as well. We can set another mark. We can do MB. We can go back down to the bottom. We can delete this line and we can do single tick B, single tick A and jump all around. Pretty cool. One little hint, if you want to save a mark across files, you have to use an uppercase register name. So if we did capital A, you could actually be somewhere in the directory you're currently working in and jump straight back to the mark that you set in a whole different file, which can be super powerful if you're constantly working maybe in like a view and a controller and some MVC framework, or maybe you're writing some test code and then you wanna change the code that you're actually testing against. Um, super powerful stuff. And then one of the most powerful things, and this will kind of show you the true power of Vim and how, how advanced it can get, is the idea of macros. So what macros do is they allow you to record your keystrokes and play them back, which is, it's pretty awesome. And it works the same way where you hit the macro command, which is gonna be Q in this case, and then you give it a register to record into, you'll start typing, and then you'll hit Q again to stop recording. And then you can play that back n amount of times, where, where you can do like, say for example, you wanna play it back 10 times, you would do 10 at, and then the register that you saved it into. So if we could think of something right here, what if we want to insert Alex loves local hack day on 10 different lines? Well, that would be pretty simple. So we go down here, we're gonna start by pressing Q and save it into the A register. So we'll do Q A. You'll see in the bottom left, it says recording. So from this point on, it's gonna start recording every single thing I type. So we need to be pretty, pretty careful what we type and make sure we do it right the first time. But the good thing is we can always redo it. So let's start now. We're gonna type Alex loves local hack day. Now we'll exit that, we'll copy it with capital Y, and then we're gonna paste it on the line below. And then we're gonna go down one line and exit and hit Q to stop recording. Cool, so now to play it back, we can do 10 at A. 
Alex Loves Local Hack Day. And that's pretty awesome. And that's like kind of a very simple one. You could think about how you could get very fine grained. You can actually set incrementers with Vim scripts. So you could say, start your macro, let I equal zero, and then increment it throughout your macro and do really crazy stuff. I mean, a really simple example is making maybe like an ordered list, but you could see how you could get super, super carried away with it. And it's really fun. Uh, it's also really easy to think you're gonna go build a feature and an hour later you've been playing with Vim and your boss is really mad or your, your friends you're hacking with are really mad because you've been sitting here playing with Vim and they're trying to ship the next Facebook or something. Um, cool, so that kind of covers the basic of Vim, some of the commands, some of the movements. Um, the last thing I'd like to talk about is some of the other features like configuring your Vim to be just the way that you'd like it to and some ways to continue your learning. So for Vim, we have a configuration file called a VimRC. Um, it lives in our home directory. So if I open up my VimRC, you'll see it here. It has a ton of stuff. Uh, I use this really cool thing called Vundle, which is like a plugin manager. So it's similar, like if you use Sublime Text and I have a package manager, and you can do package install and get a lot of cool stuff like Emmet or Zencoder or bracket highlighting. And we have the same exact idea in Vim, which is really cool. You can also customize anything you want. You can change colors, you can set your own key mappings, which is really powerful. So Vim gives us a lot out of the box, but it's fully customizable, which I think is probably one of the most powerful aspects of it. You can put your, your VimRC up on GitHub, your friends can contribute to it, they can fork it, do something with it, they can send a pull request, maybe they write some cool, some cool um, mapping that they want you to use. There you go, they send a pull request, you pull it down, you're good to go. Really awesome. Uh, the simplest way to get ready for, with Vim, say that again. The simplest way to get started with Vim um, is definitely with Vim Tutor. I think that there's a lot of online tutorials, but Vim Tutor is built into any sort of Nix machine. So Vim is like this sort of superset of VI, and it ships on Unix, most Linux distros, everything. And it comes with a thing called Vim Tutor. So if you're just in your in your shell and you type Vim Tutor, it's going to open up a full-on Vim tutorial, and it'll walk you through how to do just about everything you could really need to <laughs> need to do in Vim. It's pretty long, but if I were you, I'd go through it, have fun with it. You can edit it, do whatever you want. And yeah, hope you enjoyed Vim. Happy hacking, guys.